the mullet. Welcome back. We were just listening to a very young, very molded Billy Corgan. 17 years old in his metal band called Hexen, doing some guitar solo. Uh, I call that video, All Skill, No Soul. God, was that, that was so painful to listen to for me. <laughs> um and I think every 80s metal nerd wanted to shred like Eddie Van Halen. And, uh, you know, but <laughs> you got to be able to do it in a way that's listenable and uh, add some soul to it, you know. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think of that, Mason? <laughs> okay, I feel way better about what I was thinking now. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's kind of boring. <laughs> so, wow. Well, no, like I just, mean, but I mean, yeah. it's like... Like, I guess I, the word I was going to say was, like, long. I was like, is this going to – when does this solo yeah, end? Yeah. You know, but, I mean, yes. I would say that kind of flows with what you're saying with the whole, like, it doesn't have soul. It, it, it's not – it's technically mostly well executed, you know. It's <laughs> it's difficult yeah. to do, but that doesn't mean it's enjoyable to listen to, you know. Yeah, I, I, think, it's, I think it's important for folks to see uh, Corgan's metal roots before we get to – uh, most of the early era of the Smashing Pumpkins because the Pumpkins were not a rock band to start. They were a new wave band. Um, but as you can see, he had the metal bug inside of him the whole time. Um, it, it just laid dormant. As he got older, he became a goth kid instead of a metal kid. He used to have this tape, and on one side was Master of Puppets. The other side was Joy Division. And uh, his mom used to go freaking nuts, like... How can you listen to both of those bands? They are the exact <laughs> opposite bands. <laughs> and uh, what I've noticed with Pumpkin fans is those fans that really do see um, the power of New Wave, Joy Division, The Cure, um, they see that power the same they see with, with metal. If you can put both of those in the that's a great genre category, you're going to love the Pumpkins because that's what – that's what the pumpkins bring to rock music is that perspective. Um, but I'm going to tell you that over time, it, I I have come to see how Billy Corgan held both of those bands and those albums as equally classic, amazing, despite it sounding so very different. Um, <laughs> so not only was he in a bad metal band, he was also in a really bad new wave band before the pumpkins. It was called The Marked. Uh, Billy Corgan has what's called a port wine stain birthmark all over most of his body. And he uh, he started a band with a another band member of that band had the same birthmark. So they were both tormented a lot for it growing up. So they called themselves The Marked. I'm probably only going to get through half of this, but I can't do it. <laughs> I can't. This is called Scary Neurotic. I think you might have been 19 here. <laughs>
Um, that's a Grammy Award winning singer songwriter, one of the best selling artists of all time, right there. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, it has it has something to it. There's yeah. something there. Well, I would say you know just, we're we're both laughing, but we haven't got, done anything. You have a right? really good point, right? You know, I mean, he, he's wildly successful musician right and yep in the early days it was a little rough right you know what <laughs> i mean and yeah you know having not having you know professional video editing tools back in the i'm guessing mid 80s uh you know you, it's a, it's very difficult to put together a music video of any kind of quality you know i mean did they have access to a studio or not? So, you know what I mean? Like no. <laughs> they scraped together 500 bucks to go rent studio time from, yep. you know, some random place down the street. Right. But like, yeah, at the same time, it's like, you know, if you, if it's your, you know, your dream and your passion and you keep working at it, you know, it, it, it might not come quick. Yeah. That solo that we opened the video with to this was two years. It was two minutes. One year, in, in one year land. Was one two, year. Okay. A year. But still, yeah. I mean, that's a long time, right? You know, yeah. it, it's yeah. not going to happen in a week. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's interesting how different he sounds. Yeah. Um, he does not know how to sing with his voice. He doesn't have a lot of natural vocal talent uh, it, it, from a technical standpoint. You know, um, <laughs> he, it's it really is incredible how different his voice is, and what blows me away is that he had such courage. I mean, he could have been, like I say, he's one of the best guitar players ever, in my opinion. So he could have just rode that wave, just got better on the guitar, been the lead guitarist in some great band, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you know, at this point he hadn't written any great songs, and he even even he would admit that. So he doesn't know of his songwriting talent. But I'm amazed that someone who sings like that is like, I'm going to be the lead singer of the best band I do. I'm not just going to be a guitarist because he already, he was already showing some technical chops with the guitar. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, you would think he would just, Oh, okay. Well, I guess this is what I'm good at. I'll just ride this. But it, he really put himself out there. It's like, no, I'm going to be a singer. And he, he becomes one, in my opinion, one of the best, I think he has one of the best voices I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. And I like the fact that his, He's very unique, very Bob Dylan-esque in the sense that his voice changed album to album every two years. It, it changed dramatically, not right. just in the quality, but also the style he's singing, um, what he's trying to do with the voice. And here he's just, I don't know what he's trying to do here. Some Morrissey spooky thing. I got, I got, I got a very strong Doors vibe from that, uh, the very beginning yeah. of that music video. I don't want to be in yeah. your shoes. Yeah, I can hear it. Well, Jim Morrison. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so the marked, uh, they broke up, never got a record deal, comes back, tail between his legs, and uh, gets a job at the record store. Doesn't know what the hell he's going to do. Comes up with an idea for the band. But all he has is the name, the stupidest name for a band. He came up with the name, you know, this mythic, silly name, the Smash, Smashing Pumpkins. And, you know, I used to tell complete strangers, oh, that's going to be the name of my band, or I have a band. And there was no band, you know. It was like a joke, you know. It was between me and me. Him and James Eha started getting together. James Eha is big into New Wave as well. James and I first met through a, a mutual friend of James and mine. We all used to just get together at Len's house. Uh, for like four or five hours and just kind of write a song and record it. One time we were doing one of James's songs and me being me, I was like, oh, it'd be better if you put this here and this here and this there. And James got very upset. So I didn't see him for two months and I thought, well, I must have pissed that guy off. And one day I was working at the record store and the phone rings and it's James. And he said, I want to get together and play. <laughs> I said, okay. And that's when we started the Pumpkins. Okay. And then they got into the, and then Billy got into the argument with uh, Darcy. But see, it was actually right here was where I first met Darcy. This band was playing called the John Butcher Axis, and I was sort of standing here like this, looking this way, and I hear this girl talking behind me saying, "Oh, I think that band's really good." And I turned around and I was like, "Are you crazy?" And I got in an argument with her, <laughs> right in this very spot, and uh, that pretty much sums up our relationship, arguing from the beginning. Darcy was the kind of person that you would go see a movie and you would think that was the worst movie I ever saw. 
and you'd say, hey, did you see that movie? And she'd say, oh, wasn't it great? So the first show they played together, I actually have a full bootleg of that. And they have no drummer. It's a drum machine. So you talk about big 80s, new wave. <laughs> and we got the drum machine going because the clip I'm about to play is from 1988. The first show with Darcy and, and Iha in the, in the band, drum machine. <laughs> and this is a song they never recorded. And it's right. called Screaming. This will be our last number. I'd like to thank the Avalon Nightclub, Paul, excellent mixing man. He deserves many applause. <laughs> and your mic is enough. I love how the crowd's not paying attention. You can hear them chatting. There's Darcy. And I'd like to thank Vince. It's James Eha. And McDermott. I'd like to thank Whoa! I'd like to thank the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think of this one, sir? Yeah. <laughs> I like it way better than the the Mark song we were listening to. It's so much better, so much better. Yeah, no, I um, I like the way that guitar sounds. I don't know if it's a riff or what it is exactly, but it's it's got a yeah, it's sound riff. to it. Yeah, like, yeah. I think it's important for folks to remember what popular rock music was like in 1988. Yeah. Poison, Def Leppard. Yes, Metallica was there, but Metallica was not getting on the radio. Yeah. So Corgan, Corgan leaned on the new wave because at least new wave could get on the radio and he thought he could make a, uh, make a break there. Um, he was convinced otherwise very quickly after this, when they got a drummer and realized the power of the drummer he had. Um, but I think it's it's really cool that this exists and you can hear. I'm amazed that the quality is the sound quality on this is so good. It's funny, though, because like when you were talking about like the people in the crowd kind of talking, you can hear them talking in the background as I feel like I've not obviously not this particular show. But I'm like, I feel like I've been in that that bar. <laughs> Or yeah, like, you know, I know. I've been to those shows where it's like some band that no one's ever heard of, and they're just doing a show, and yep. half the people are there just for a drink. Just, Didn't just even a know drink. The band was there, you know. <laughs> I know. Uh, all right, let's go. Don't 
the hell was that? Trying to get fancy. Rough ending. Let's hear it one more time for the Smashing Pumpkins. The karaoke-esque announcer at the end. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the part that brings me like, wow, I feel like I've been in this bar. <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of cool, though, like... um especially watching the videos back to back where we just recorded the one where we were looking at their last live performance that was recorded. And then this one, right. You know, it's, yep. it's kind of interesting. It's like, you can almost, I think, see exactly what you're trying to draw out with the whole, like you can see them like growing into the band they'll become and where they're yep. not quite there yet. And where they're like <clears throat> beginning to get it or where they go too far and like kind of fall off or, you know what I right. mean? Like there are these awkward moments where, it's like, oh, you're so close to what you're going to be, but you're not quite there yet. So it's, it's, it's kind of cool because I feel like you can hear that in that song, especially yeah. if you listen to like a once they were famous Smashing Pumpkin song right before it, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I agree with you that there's something to the guitar in this that's a little special for new wave music. Yeah. There's a little there's a little bit more of a metal edge to it. Um, I think that's probably what Corgan was trying to do was try to be a more metal edged new wave band. He thought he thought he could take the genre in that direction. Um, and I believe he did by the time Machina came out. Uh, but we'll get to that. All right, so there we go. The first Smashing Pumpkins show. So is this with... is this in the top fifty or is this just a uh... Hell no. No. <laughs> <laughs> This, this is for educational purposes only. <laughs> educational. <laughs> this is not in my top 50, no. <laughs> Just make it sure. No. <laughs> You'd probably be like, man, I don't know. Did What's the rest want... of the list? Be like... I'd be like, did they come out with 49 songs? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's a good question. Good question. All right, that's it. I'm Justin. That's James. The next one, we're going to get this band a drummer. Here we go. See you later. <laughs>